So listen, man, we here. We, we in, in the yard. <laughs> we in the yard. We in the yard. We here with the bro Shasha, fresh off that 46 months off on Rikers Island, laying Freak. up. You feel what I'm saying? But yo, bro, listen, right quick. I just want I just want you to explain to the viewers because some people got it confused and we doing this series about uh the prison boxing and you know there also was a famous prison boxer called Boxing Shah from Rochester. Yeah. Not to be confused with the bro Shah Shah. But um for the record, y'all never fought, right? Nah, we never fought. We never even sparred. His name was Corey Spower, he's from Rochester. That was my man, he was a good dude. Spoke about that first fight in Elmira. Yeah. What was the second fight? What was the second major prison fight? It was Green Haven years later. It was Green Haven. It was Green Haven? It was Green Haven. Brother named Hanif was my trainer. Mm. Hanif was like a master trainer. He was magnificent. But there were so many trainers there, you can't take credit because he would send you to certain people for them to work on certain stuff. Like a brother named Salahuddin, Panama, he would help you work on your left hook. The brother Jahad, he would help you work on your overhand right. Shaqim Allah, he'd give you your footwork. So he would send you through the ranks of different dudes who specialize in, in, in different parts of the science and to perfect you so when you get in the ring, you can execute you all together. Him, he was like a master slipper. He was a defensive artist. You couldn't, you couldn't hit him. So he wanted me to adapt his style. And that fight, it was me, and it was a big guy. It was no weight classes then, because unless Kevin Rooney brought his fighters in. Other than that, when it's internally, there's no weight class. Ain't no yo, you 200 and 6'2 and I'm five. You talk, you get in there, or you don't get in there, and you can't come to the gym no more. And um. This brother here, this was a Latin brother, and he was Cuban. I forgot his name, man, but I remember this was the second major joint, the Cuban door, and he fought, he had that 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 Cuban style with one arm out. It was different, and um, we really rocked. And I'm telling you, like, the first round, that boy hit me, he hit me with some fire. He had long reach, man. My boy Doc Kim was in my corner, rest in peace. Um, Shot Kim was there, but Hanif, he told me, he said, listen, right? You gotta execute this, you gotta take it straight to his body. Stop trying to headline, take it to his body. He said, I want you to throw a left hook for the next five rounds at one spot. And I was like, they always wanted me to target certain, and it worked. It's a good science, it works. Because after about two rounds of just tightening up that boy's side with them left hooks, tighten him up, he went down. Once he went down, if I flinched that side, he would go down. Then I could do what I want. I fake with the left throw overhand, fake with the left throw straight right. And we got to, um, we only did six rounds. That six rounds, they stopped it because it wasn't really supposed to be a fight. What it is, he hit me crazy dumb hard. It was supposed to be a sparring match. And when he hit me dumb hard, they said, whoa, 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 all right, yo, we scrapping now. So now we put the cuffs on, we put the, with the helmets on. It's real now, it's different. You know, in a sparring match, you ain't supposed to be hitting hard. You ain't supposed to be trying to take your boy head off. And he tried that, and that's why we started rocking. And um, we got the sixth round. I finished them, they stopped it before the bell. But that that we hug, you started training with us, but it was rough because I learned that when they say, yo, whenever you get in the ring, you know, protect yourself at all times, that thing there is real because we were supposed to only be sparring. And the man hit me with a flush one, two down the pipe that rocked me. And in sparring, he wasn't supposed to do that. You know, I'm coming, I'm loose. You know, I'm first, I'm filling out with the jab. And he just came with the boom, boom. Jesus. I saw lights, everything. <laughs> I saw everything. But um, one thing is like, I learned from him fighting him, you can't fight everybody the same. I had to fight him in like a broken rhythm. I couldn't get a rhythm. So I had to fight in a broken rhythm. And when you have a, a broken rhythm, can't nobody counter you. They can't time you. It's like the only thing that can beat speed is timing. And that's how that went for that first major fight when I had a brother, Hanif. Shout out to Hanif, man. Great, great, great trainer. Nothing but body shots, and like he could have went on for his will, but his corner wouldn't let him go on. Like his will, he was like, yeah, yeah, but everybody said it was like he wanted to fight, but his body and his corners just wouldn't let him. But um, he was a great fight. He's a good dude. Just that 
And a lot of people in the fight world, they do this, man. Don't take advantage of your sparring partner. When you get in there, if y'all sparring, y'all spar. If y'all gonna fight, fight. Don't sneak some sneaky stuff in because you could drug somebody crazy bad and they got a championship fight tomorrow. You hurting them. Like dudes cutting eyes and breaking jaws and ribs and we just sparring. You're not supposed to sustain no damage in the sparring match. So was it ever was it ever any tension between y'all after that? Like because nah, you know he joined the team and he became great. Did he ever apologize for that? that yeah, thing? yeah, yeah. He did. He said, "Yo, but you know he tried to intimidate. He's like, yo, you know, shot. All I've been hearing is you. So you know, when I get in here, I gotta do what I do. I gotta use every tactic I can to make sure I win. And that was one of his tactics. Like he's trying to put me out in a sparring match. Like he, yeah, I beat the champa. But um. Just to, just to cease all rumors, man, you know, Corey Sparrow, back to boxing shot. He was never in, on no boxing team together except Auburn. And Auburn they had weight classes because Kevin Rooney was bringing his fighters in. So me and him would have never fought there, ever. Now, every other spot where they had the underground fight classes, they didn't have no weight classes, but we was never in the same spot for us to go at it together. And besides that, that was my comrade. That was a friend of mine. We wouldn't have really tried to hurt each other, but we really got in there and tried to sharpen each other's skills. So let me ask you though, if y'all would have got in the ring, what type of fights you think it would have been? Well, anybody who knows boxing shot, homie, I'm five foot five. And when I'm fighting, I'm at like 156, 154. Boxing shot is like 6'3" about 212 solid. Mm. See, I didn't know he was that tall. Oh, yeah, and, and the man could really fight. Like, going in there is like, you get in the ring with him, you're going to have to really rock. And I never say, like, whether I can't beat him or can't beat him to anybody. I know when I get in there in the ring, I give it everything I got until I can't stand no more. I pour it on, I fire from bell to bell until it's over with. And if you beat me, then you're better than me. So far, I haven't met nobody that was better than me in the ring. But, you are, but for the record, you are undefeated. Undefeated in New York State prison system as far as a fighter. And you can ask anybody in New York State prison system, has there ever been anyone who has defeated me in the ring or in the underground? And I'm in touch with everybody who's up north. I just did 28 years upstate, and I did four years on Rikers Island. My name is Shasha. It's only one from Harlem. My knuckle game is serious. And I never lie about this fight game. No one has ever defeated me. We out here working, baby. Putting in that heavy work. Heavy you work. heard? Heavy, heavy work. work. Movie action. Movie action. Real so life. I'm still facing 200 years. I'm just that now I'm out here fighting it. And I'm surprised there's a lot of people out here just out on bill fighting the cases. And the law libraries out here in the streets is empty. I went in there yesterday and how is the law libraries out here? It's empty. And just like the law libraries and jail is empty. People not fighting. You can't put your whole life in a lawyer's hand. He goes home at the end of the day. He gets paid whether you blow trial or not. Please step up. I go to the law library. It was like two chicks and an old dude that was looking up elder law. Like, and people was fighting. Everybody I run into at paroles out on bail or fighting something. Like, yeah, I gotta get. I'm in there. I'm not playing. I got a laptop. I'm doing my research. I'm not playing no games. I'm reporting legal news every night. Follow me, Shy Shy on YouTube, or follow Laz. You can't catch with me. You catch up with Laz because we stay in tune, we stay in touch, and we out here and we doing everything that count to make sure other people get out here too. But y'all gotta fight too. We can't fight for y'all. Y'all gotta help fight too.